Unpopular K-pop opinions, yet my first video is obviously an unpopular opinions video because I need those views lmao, if you want to skip to one specific opinion, the timestamps will be in the description and comment, let's get into it. Dahun cannot rap, I mean, she is a good rapper, but not as impressive as Momo or Young. her voice simply doesn't suit rapping, it's cute, feminine and dreamy. But I personally prefer more badass and girl crush vibe that Che Young and Momo gives me. We all got to admit that Jahan raps have been becoming more cringy, especially in Feel Special and More and More eras. Like, I literally can't listen to these songs because the way she delivers her lines, her flow, her style is not my cup of tea. If you enjoy her rapping, it's great. But if I was JYP, I would switch current positions of Jahan. Practically, she's the main rapper now, and Momo, sub vocalist. Dahun would be much better as a sub-vocalist than Momo, her voice is also good, but her vocal tone doesn't suit twice as high-pitched songs, she is naturally an alto and excels in rapping much more than singing, while Dahun's singing voice is light and angelic, both would not receive the amount of hate they do now and listeners would be more satisfied with the content, also, I am tired that from all of the people from the rap line, the person who gets the most lines is Dahun, like, I love her personality and she's cute, but based solely on skills, Che Young is much more proficient in rapping and she deserves her main rapper position the most, but she does not get the amount of lines of a main rapper, she's a vocalist, this is becoming irritating, I can handle Da Hyun's rapping when her rap is mixed with Che Young's or when she doesn't have a full verse, like in Cheer Up or Fancy, but in more and more, maybe. The other reason why I'm a little bit annoyed is the fact that in many groups lead rappers or singers are treated like mains. This just saddens me to see mains being pushed in the back and without the opportunity to showcase their talent. For example, Jenny is a lead vocalist right now even though she was a very promising rapper during the debut, so is Che Young, but companies don't know how to utilize their talent properly. iZone should disband. So these are just my thoughts from the situation, I think it is very unlikely that Eyes 1 will get an extension, and I also don't think they should get one, and here's why 1, they don't have a concert or award show appearances planned close to the deadline so with IOI and Wana 1, they both had concerts or shows that were close to the deadline, so they both got about a 1 month extension to finish up those activities too. The pandemic, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, I could see an extension happening. But that's also unlikely, there's no clear end to this pandemic, so it would be a waste of time to wait around to see when it would end, especially for companies with a plan in mind for the Eyes 1 members after disbanding 3, the rigging scandal. Now it is unfortunate that they lost 3 months due to the scandal, however, extending their contract would not be fair, I get that it wasn't their fault. But the girls who have done what they want to produce to do, gain popularity for their future group or solo debuts, manipulation happened, and they still let them continue to the end of their contract, so I think it is best to just go quietly instead of extending the contract, because another group X1 had to disband in the same situation. 4. The members waiting for Eyes 1 members addition to their group to but it is no secret that most of the girls will be added to or be making their debut this year. Most of the trainees haven't debuted yet because their companies are waiting for the girls to come back before making their debut, and it isn't fair to them to wait any longer than they have. For example, the trainees in WM have been waiting for two and a half years for Jian to come back to make their debut. 5. The companies honestly, I don't see most of these companies agreeing to continue the contract even if OTR were to give them a more significant cut of the profit. From a company standpoint, even if their groups don't sell nearly as many albums as iZone, they still would make up that profit by putting them in more commercials. iZone lost their reputation with brands with the exception of Pepsi, and not as many companies want to work with them. I think Eyes One has had a good run, and I believe it is best to end it while they're ahead. I know many fans will miss them, but it's better to move them into the next part of their careers. Guilty until proven innocent is wrong. To be very honest I never really agreed with the idea of guilty until proven innocent or always believe the victim first. That specific case about 17 and G-Idol that happened recently only made me disagree even more with those ideas. Like I'm sorry, I'm not gonna blindly believe the victim right away, especially not after so many false accusations that happened in only a few days. You all need to understand that human beings are assholes lol the victim isn't a victim just because they said so. People can lie about those things, sadly it happens. 
guilty until proven innocent is a very unfair way of thinking. Everyone is innocent until an actual investigation happens. I will not blindly pick sides before that. I will wait for an actual investigation to happen. Until then I'm neutral. If that makes me an asshole and or suggests that I'm siding with the abuser then no oh well lol. Pop companies aren't responsible for an idol scandal, so most of you all know the drill when it comes to scandals. An idol got into a problem and news breaks out about it. Then fans of the group would blame the company for the idol scandal. Blaming the company just rubs me the wrong way. It's almost as if fans can't accept that their idol have flaw. A few exceptions can be made i.e. cultural appropriation, racism etc. If the company was involved then they should get blame along with the idol. But when it's a dating scandal then the company shouldn't get blamed. I mean what did they do? They can't control every aspect of the idol's life. Even if they do control every, fans are going to complain about oh they should let the artist have more freedom. Wendy is the best rapper in Red Velvet. Before you say anything, I am a real love and Yeri is my bias. Red Velvet is not a rap focused group. They are more of a vocal focused group and honestly they excel at it, with amazing vocal line, Wendy, Sulji and Joy, their vocal ranges is very impressive and nobody can deny their vocal power, but when it comes to rapping I feel like Red Velvet lacks luster, again, they are not a rap focused group so it makes sense as to why, but they do have a rap line, Irene and Yeri, sometimes Joy, honestly, whenever I watch performances of them rapping live or just rapping in their songs, I feel like they lack flow and just the entire vibe that is required in a song. I feel like most of their title tracks do not need a rap with the exception of Umpa Umpa and Dum Dum which I felt had great raps. It almost feels like they are forced to rap or else they won't have any lines in the entire song. Sometimes the songs don't even need a rap, but they need to have one or else Irene and Yeri will be left with like 4 seconds of lines, which leads to maybe mediocre raps. I'm looking at you, Psycho, while watching their live performances. Their rap line lacks stage presence which is kinda weird because rap parts are the parts of the song which add more to the live stages. Wendy on the other hand, while being a main vocalist and one of the best vocalists of her generation, is actually really good at rapping. Her flow, her pronunciation, her stage presence while rapping, her freestyle, it's good for a person who is not in the rap line, her techniques, it's just so impressive. Honestly if she weren't a main vocalist, she could have had the rapper position. Querentia was filled with skips and filler tracks. I got through the first two sides but after side 3 it became so long and I was having a hard time going through it all. I was already forgetting most of the songs and was just not feeling it. The concept of the side being a track which is just EDM pumpy music wasn't my taste either. It just was so unnecessary and literally just a filler track as an interlude. I feel like it was like 4 mini albums squished together 20 songs was so cool at first hearing that from Changa, but the sides didn't feel like something she would release. I believe this is unpopular because from what I've seen on Pop YouTube, and how Bicycle was fairly pleased by most by all harangues, I just don't see how good it was for an album. I skipped half the tracks when I listen it occasionally and I end up having to listen to Spotify Premium Ads 247. Personally, 75% of side C and D were boring and just bland. It wasn't anything like I was wanting to rip my ears out, but it was just so boring of a song. This is exactly why I much rather prefer quality over quantity and pop. I would have been fine if it was 915 songs but with all the sides and filler tracks, I'd honestly would rather just listen to the title songs of each sides, Dream of You, Bicycle, Play, Stay Tonight. Overall I was pretty disappointed. Chung Hae's minis were great, but for the first album this was just not it. The song she did with Christopher though deserves much more for my fans. I don't know why Bad Boy wasn't on the album, that shit slapped. Chung Ha needs another gotta go moment, I'm begging you MNH. SN boy groups all sound the same, I was just listening to Don't Call Me by Shiny and realized that if I didn't know it was Shiny, I won't be able to tell anymore if it's EXO, Shiny, NCT or Super M who's singing, their boy groups tend to have different concepts but the same sound, IDK could be just me, SN girl groups, however have a very distinct sound and I can tell exactly which group is singing it. Bumbaya is the worst song in Blackpink's discography. 
to clarify, I am a blink and this is in now way hate towards my alt group, I turned on some random playlist on YouTube titled best pop debut songs and as soon Boombaya started to play I immediately skipped it and it made me realize how much I can't stand that song. Now, the verses are kinda okay, a bit cheesy but yet, very catchy, but, man I can't stand chorus and post chorus. I see people proclaiming Boombay as the best debut song all the time and I still can't understand why, it's not that just now it started to sound pretty outdated, but it sounded outdated to me even when it initially came out, the instrumental driven, shallow and empty chorus, the repetition of Boombay and ya ya ya, the mix of stereotyped Native American whooping sound with oppa shouts, all really make me dislike it so much, now whistle, whistle is the opposite. If I could count Whistle as their official debut swing and turn a blind eye on Boombay's existence then I'd classify their debut as one of the best indeed, but, sadly, that's not the case and Boombay is still alive and breathing, Whistle definitely outsold. Overall, I think these opinions are quite unpopular, tell me what you think in the comments below, do you disagree? Don't forget to like and please subscribe, pretty please, anyways, see you soon loves.